In this video, I'm going to discuss orbs, consciousness control, and UFOs. Orbs seem to be rampant within the literature of anomalous phenomena. In fact, I have seen orbs myself, and I'm going to go deep into that story later in this video. But first, I want to go over an absolutely amazing story found in the book Hunt for the Skinwalker by Dr. Colm Kelleher and investigative journalist George Knapp. Before we do that, let me give a little background on the Skinwalker Ranch. The Skinwalker Ranch is located in northeastern Utah, an area called the Uinta Basin, which has a long history of being known as a paranormal hot, hotbed. In fact, the Ute Indian tribe has an oral tradition going back 15 generations that portrays this area as a place of frequent unexplained phenomena. Skinwalker Ranch is currently owned by real estate mogul and tech investor Brandon Fugel, who has a team of scientists right now at the Skinwalker Ranch property studying the alleged phenomena that frequents this property, utilizing a whole variety of advanced tools. Now to the amazing orb story that allegedly occurred back in the 90s on the premise of Skinwalker Ranch when the Gorman family owned the property. Tom Gorman, the owner of Skinwalker Ranch at the time, saw a blue orb flying through the tree line. And as it was flying through the trees, it was easily visible because the object cast a very bright blue glow. His wife also started to notice it and, and she was alarmed by it. Then it went from the tree line and started traveling to where his horses were. And then it got close to one of his horses. And because of how bright the object was, it cast an, a very eerie, illuminating blue glow upon the horse itself. The horse was shaking its head as if to, as if to free itself from a swarm of flies. Tom noticed that that this was a little weird because usually when he saw blue these blue orbs and they would come close to any of his animals, the animals would freak. But in this instant, the horse did not freak and responded as if it was a swarm of flies. Suddenly, the blue orb darted away from the horses at astonishing speed and abruptly stopped 15 feet above the ground and about 15 to 20 feet away from from the Gormans. The book Hunt for the Skinwalker continues to convey. The exterior of the orb was a clear, hard shell, not unlike glass. It was maybe two or three times the size of a baseball, and inside the glass-like exterior moved a swirling, intensely blue substance. It seemed to Tom like a liquid beginning to boil, a nearly bubbling, incandescent blue fluid. He could hear a faint crackling sound from the object, like static electricity sometimes makes. As Tom watched this amazing spectacle, the hair on the back of his neck rose. He could feel a wave of deep, naked fear washing over him. He felt paralyzed with the deepest, most visceral fear he had ever known. It was overwhelming. Wild animals have trapped Tom. He had been close to death, but he had never felt anything like the intensity of the terror he felt now. He knew Ellen was feeling the same because she had begun to hyperventilate. She gasped deeply and her body had begun to shake. Tom felt like he was going to have a seizure. Ellen Gorman, Tom's wife, turned on a flashlight and this elicited a response in the blue orb and it shot off into the distance. After this happened, Tom Gorman recognized that the overwhelming, paralyzing fear that this blue orb caused him to have vanished immediately. It was like turning off a light switch. Tom Gorman reflects on the impact this blue orb had on him and his wife. How could that orb have provoked such abject terror in both of them? Tom knew that the fear he had felt was artificial. It had not been a normal response for him. He guessed that this bright blue orb had deliberately manipulated his emotions. How could this be? He wondered. I'm rather open to the potentiality that Tom Gorman and his wife Ellen Gorman had the experience that I just laid out. And the reason for that is because I myself have seen orbs. And I'm going to share that story with you. It happened many years ago. I was in a situation that was causing me psychological distress. So to deal with it, I decided to go to the roof of my apartment. So I go up to the roof of my apartment and I start 
doing martial arts. After my martial arts session is over, I then decide to sit and meditate. So I meditated for 10 minutes and in this meditation session, I envisioned that I was in a beautiful, radiant forest. Now granted, I don't usually meditate in this way. Usually I just focus on my breathing, but for whatever reason, this was the method I chose that evening. As soon as the meditation was over, I opened up my eyes and out of my peripheral vision, I see very bright blinking orbs, many of them like flying around. I don't necessarily recollect which side I saw them first, so let's just say the right side. So I see it out of my peripheral vision and like anybody would do, I'm like, what the hell is that? And I look, gone. And then when I brought my face back center, Right there and then, I noticed these orbs flying around out of, my, out of the left side of my peripheral vision. I look, gone. This is very significant to me. And, and interestingly, I would say that this to me is more intriguing than if I would have seen the orbs straight away. Because it, it forces me to consider the intelligence behind these orbs. For starters, it appears that these orbs did not want to showcase themselves in a way which would be more straightforward where I see them in front of me. I have no idea why they chose to, to only showcase themselves from the peripheral. Furthermore, as soon as I went to look at them, they blinked off, they were gone. And <laughs> well, th th there's two possibilities here. Either they had amazing reflexes, so right when I started moving my head, they blinked off or they were precognitive. Have no idea what applies to them. These orbs appeared as fireflies, though I think it's very unlikely that there were fireflies suddenly on the top of an apartment building in the midst of Los Angeles, but I guess you never know. I do believe that what I saw was something unexplained, but then again, I'm certainly open to it being something of, of a conventional nature. Uh, Twitter user at Blue Book Believe had the following to say to me regarding my experience. Have you ruled out natural physical effects, i.e. your eyes reacting to light after they are closed for so long? I'd start with the simplest answer first, try and rule that out because the further and more esoteric you go, the more you're in interpretive mode, which is hit and miss, I respond. I haven't ruled that out in the least, but the unambiguous nature of the experience and the fact it only happened once and the fact other meditators have experienced it gives me pause. When it happened, I emailed a meditation teacher and asked him if he knew anything about this phenomena and here's what he had to say. Nobody seems to know exactly what they are, but I tend to think they're either a spiritual guide or another higher dimensional being simply blinking hello or a tiny opening in the fabric that appears to separate our world from the spiritual dimensions. There are two noteworthy differences between my experience seeing orbs and Tom and Ellen Gorman's experience. And, 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 to, be, and to be clear, I, I don't know for certainty whether it was one orb moving erratically or multiple orbs because it was my peripheral vision, but it was very, very bright. That I do remember distinctly. And you could certainly make the argument that the fact that I saw them out of my peripheral as opposed to seeing them in front of my face makes the evidentiary value of my experience less. And that's, that's very fair and valid. But besides seeing them from the peripheral, another big distinction between my experience and the Gormans is that when they saw that blue orb in, in that time frame, their emotions were manipulated. They, they re recount that they had extraordinary fear while seeing that orb, suggestive that the blue orb itself was manipulating their emotions. My emotions were not altered whatsoever. However, I have had an experience where the phenomenon completely altered my, my physiology, completely altered my mood. And I've told this story many times, and I'm not going to completely rehash it now. Suffice to say, when I was 14 years old in Vermont, I received a telepathic message while in a car looking out the window. 
and simultaneously receiving that telepathic message, I felt pure bliss that turned on like a light switch with no warning. And so I look at Tom Gorman's and Ellen Gorman's experience, and I look at my experiences, and the, the, the commonality of them, from my perspective, only serves to underscore that there is, there, that I think there is non-human intelligence that frequents our planet and has the capability uh, of not only manipulating human emotion, but presenting itself to whoever it wants to present itself to. In the vein of consciousness control, I have an amazing story to share with you from the book Confession by Dr. Bob Jacobs and Robert Hastings. Jet engine mechanic Christopher Smith relays that at the height of the Cuban Missile Crisis, two nuclear-armed B-52 planes took off, and at some point in their flight, they had a mid-air emergency, so they had to return back to Loring Air Force Base in Maine. Shortly after they landed, a, an enormous mile-long cigar-shaped vehicle emerges at low altitude right over, the, right over the taxiway, and hundreds of Air Force personnel that were there gaped at this vehicle in wonder. Robert Hastings continues regarding this amazing UAP incident. Unbelievably, after the UFO left, these men mysteriously behaved like oblivious automatons, calmly returning to their duties without even mentioning the amazing incident to one another. Smith wrote, No one spoke of the UFO then or later. Our branch chief and all of the shop chiefs were sitting there having coffee, even though they had all been out on the aircraft parking ramp and saw the same thing we had. Not a word then or later was said about this extraordinary event which was both highly unusual and bizarre. But at the time, it didn't even occur to me that it was. It was like a dream or as if it never happened, but it did. Robert Hastings relays that it was as if a powerful mental suggestion had been planted in the minds of all of the witnesses of what they saw, not to worry about it and not to wonder about it. The book Confession goes on to explain. The most noteworthy aspect of the Smith episode in 2006 was of course the very dramatic information he was divulging to me. If the incident had occurred as described, a mile long cigar shaped UFO had deliberately interfered with a vital US military operation during the height of the Cuban Missile Crisis. Smith believes that the two B-52s had encountered the huge craft over the ocean and it had somehow caused mechanical glitches in both of the aircraft or perhaps remotely tampered with the nuclear bombs on board just as UFOs in other cases had disrupted the functioning of several ICBMs. Either issue could certainly have resulted in the mid-air emergency reported by the pilots. Let's briefly go over what we covered in this video. We covered the experience the Gormans had at Skinwalker Ranch in which they witnessed an intensely blue orb that manipulated their consciousness and made them feel intense fear. We went over my experience on the top of an apartment building in Los Angeles in which I saw orbs out of my peripheral vision. We went over a telepathic experience I had when I was 14 years old in which I received a telepathic message and co coinciding with that, some unseen force manipulated my consciousness and made me feel intense joy. And we went over the incident with the two B-52s. They, they landed. Shortly after that, a mile-long cigar-shaped vehicle emerges at low altitude and hundreds of Air Force personnel gape at it in wonder and subsequently they don't really talk about it, suggesting that their consciousness was manipulated. The intelligence behind that cigar-shaped vehicle wanted to plant some sort of powerful suggestion in the minds of these Air Force personnel just to be like, eh, whatever. Clearly, we are dealing with intelligences that have the potential capability of manipulating our consciousness. I think a, a takeaway is that we are dealing with most likely multiple intelligences. Wh where, where could these intelligences originate? Well, 
They could, some of them could originate from another star system. Some of them could originate from other dimensions. Some of them could originate from some sort of spiritual realm. There's no end to the possibilities of where these intelligences may originate. Another very important takeaway that I want you to have is that <laughs> if, if this is all real and I'm not some kind of loon and other people who have relayed their experiences are not loons and let's say they're accurate in their renditions, at least some of these people, I would submit to you that on this biosphere, it is probably a fact that every single moment that passes, many people all around the world are having intersections with non-human intelligence. Literally, literally, that is how pervasive non-human intelligence is on our biosphere. And that, that is what the shift is about. That is what disclosure is all about. It is the acknowledgement that we are not alone and that there are non-human intelligences on our planet, probably from multiple different origins. And that is, in my opinion, real. And in my opinion, that is an assessment that we as a civilization are going to progressively accept more and more because that is where we're headed. It may start, it may start with vehicles that the Navy encounters and so forth, but that's not where it ends. I think we're going to come to the realization as science gets on board with this and more efforts are undertaken at places like Skinwalker Ranch to investigate anomalous phenomena, <clears throat> anomalous phenomena, that the reality is not only are we, are we not alone, but there's a lot of life out there and everywhere. And sometimes humans intersect with that life. I'm going to leave you with a quote from Dr. Travis Taylor, who actually spent some time out at Skinwalker Ranch studying the purported anomalous phenomena that frequents that location. This quote is about the word paranormal, and it's from the podcast UFO YouTube channel. Paranormal means something that's not normal to this universe. Well, if we see things happening within the universe, then it must be normal to it. It just may be something that we don't understand. And we create this box of what we believe normal is, which is actually a small, narrow-minded, actually egocentric thing to do, that we think just because we created the box that we said is normal, that all the normal stuff has to fit in that box. Don't forget to subscribe. And if you'd like to support this channel, you can check out my merch shop. Link is in the description below. Or you could even become a patron. Or you could just slap a like on this bad boy and I'll appreciate it so much. Thank you so much for watching and I look forward to seeing you in the next episode. episode.